the story of really the last 48 hours, it feels like the portal exodus that has been going on in Tuscaloosa. At the time of us being live right now, you have 26 names from Alabama that have entered into the transfer portal. Some very big ones like Caleb Downs, who is the number one player currently in the transfer portal. Uh, Caden Proctor, who started for Bama at tackle last season as a true freshman. He was a five-star cat out of high school. It's not just it's not just quantity. It's also quality. Those names that I just mentioned, I think they're going to start wherever they end up going next. So why is this happening? Is it just this staff not necessarily connecting with the players? Is there some real problems in Tuscaloosa? I think what we've said about Alabama and their change at head coach is the same thing that's true for the Caleb Downs commitment as it is for the Caden Proctor commitment as it is for all the way down the line and people just handle it differently. I think some of these guys that have been around Tuscaloosa longer feel maybe a little bit more of an obligation to stay in Tuscaloosa and feel a little more loyalty feels like too harsh of a word for guys that are leaving but they feel a little bit more of a connection to Alabama and so that's why they're deciding to stay. But I think the reason why you're seeing the exodus at the level that you are transparently is the relational side of things. And I'm not telling you that Kalen DeBoer can't establish great relationships with his team, but I am saying in a world where these guys have to make decisions here pretty quickly to end up where they want to end up at, because post post spring, that portal window, it's a lot tougher to end up somewhere. I mean, if you want to be in the SEC, if you want to stay in the SEC for a lot of these guys, you can't wait till after spring practice to jump in there, unless you're a graduate, of course. So the point I'm trying to drive home here is as good a coach as Kalen DeBoer might be in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, when it came to recruiting these guys that are on the roster at the high school level, I don't think there's a pre-existing relationship with a lot of these guys. Like Washington wasn't in the Caleb Downs sweepstakes when Caleb Downs was coming out of high school in the state of Georgia. They weren't in the Caden Proctor sweepstakes when he came out of the state of Iowa. And so with that being the case, he wasn't familiar with them previously and they weren't familiar with him previously. And so I think also the star power of Kalen DeBoer isn't doing him any favors or the lack thereof rather that's not to say Kevin DeBoer hasn't done a lot at the collegiate ranks he has he's won everywhere that he's been but you hear the name Kalen DeBoer and just to be a little bit harsh here you compare it to a name like Steve Sarkeesian or a Mike Norvell like a lot of these guys didn't watch Washington football this year I have to imagine they weren't staying up for Pac-12 after dark probably tuned into the Oregon game probably tuned into the Pac-12 title game when they played Oregon the second time probably tuned into a game here or there but like Kalen DeBoer wasn't the name that a lot of these guys were familiar with coming out of high school or throughout the course of the season. And so when it comes time for them to make a decision of, do I stay or do I go? They don't have that thought of, okay, well, this, this is Steve Sarkeesian. He's developed these guys. He's put this many guys in the league. It's like, this is Kalen DeBoer. Won everywhere he's been. Sioux Falls is on the list of places he's won at. Won at Indiana. And so it's like, hmm, I can stick with this with a guy I'm not super familiar with. I don't have a relationship with, or I can go somewhere that recruited me out of high school that does know me, does know who I am as a player, and I do have a good relationship with, maybe I'm going to do that. So again, I don't think it's Kalen DeBoer's fault. It's just kind of the nature of the beast right now. And Alabama hired Kalen DeBoer for a reason. I don't think they're second-guessing their hire, even with all this portal activity. But the point remains the same. You're seeing these transfers because of the relational capital that they did not have previously. That's my own opinion on this, and I think we're starting to see that as, re- as a result of uh, how many names are in the portal right now. Again, 26 at the time of us being live. So that's the problem, right? And it's easy to sit here and talk about the problem and unpack that to death. That's what losers do. We're not losers on this show. You're not a loser if you watch the show. You're a winner. What do winners do? They figure out solutions. So what does Bama do now? I think the answer is pretty obvious. you got to attack the portal that second window. And I was waiting to get on the Paul Feinbaum show yesterday, and there was someone who called in. I think his name was Legend. I don't know if that was his real name, but that's what he called in as Legend. And he went on this epic rant saying, listen, this this is how it goes right now for Bama, but that second portal window, look out, because we're coming. We're coming after y'all in that second portal window. And I think that might be true. And that's what Bama's going to have to do, quite, quite honestly. I mean, you lose... 20 plus guys to the portal you're going to have to do some damage control and try and bring in some guys with some ability via the portal problem is again it's post spring practice so you don't have those 15 practices to get them up to speed the other problem is and josh newberg said this uh yesterday when he and i were talking in the office the problem is the players you have to pick from if you're alabama the level of quality there and the level of i mean quite frankly quantity there as well is it what it would have been if nick saban And Alabama had made the college football playoff and Saban retires a little bit earlier. So that's a whole woulda, shoulda, coulda. Uh, I love TJ Maxx. I think it's great. 
But the reason why stuff ends up at TJ Maxx is because it wasn't sold in its original store. That's kind of the same reason Alabama is shopping right now through the portal. If a guy hasn't been picked up yet, probably a reason for that. Or if a guy's in, in the portal right now, it means he wasn't committed somewhere else previously. So all that's to say, Alabama's approach now is going to be let's hit the portal hard, I think, in that second spring window. Now, how hard remains to be seen because I think we also got to make sure we keep in mind this is still Alabama. And I don't mean that to talk about like the script A or the brand or all this. Like those things obviously factor in. But when we talk about Alabama getting ravaged by the portal and all this portal exodus, it's fair. It's a large number of guys leaving your program. A lot lot of guys that were talented are not going to be on your roster anymore. But we still have to remember like everyone deals with, you know, punches differently and punches affect different people differently. To put it simply, Alabama as a roster still has a really strong jaw. Like, yeah, it's never fun to get punched in the face with how many guys that you lose through the portal. But you look at who Alabama has on their depth chart, it's still made up of top two classes since Nick Saban's been there since like 2019, more or less. Like, I just talk about 2019 because that's probably the most relevant period of time. 2020 may be a better window to 2020, 2020 to present. Bottom line, Pretty much in recent history, guys that are on this roster, they're a part of top two classes out of high school. So you're probably still a four-star or better if you're on this roster at Alabama. Now, the obvious part of this is maybe you don't have as many meaningful minutes under your belt. Maybe there's not as much experience for them, but they're still really talented players. So the cupboard isn't bare at Alabama. It's just a little bit more inexperienced. You still got Jalen Milrow. You're still, I think, in position to be competitive in your first year for Kalen DeBoer. And I say competitive for Bama standards with competing for an SEC championship and beyond that. But understand now, like there's there's going to have to be some damage control this second portal window. And we got to, I think, treat Kalen DeBoer in his first couple years in Tuscaloosa with the proper lens. And that lens is like, hey, in, in the world of college football now, there's so much player mobility. It might take him a second to really get a strong gauge for what he is as a head coach in Tuscaloosa, both as a recruiter, as a head coach, period, in the SEC. Like, it might take a second. And so I'm not saying if you're Alabama to lower your standards, but I do think that's a helpful thing to keep in mind as we move into the Kalen DeBoer era in Tuscaloosa. So a lot of big names leaving. I don't know if you have the same problem if you have someone with more star power or more you know, credentials maybe to their name when it comes to who these guys do or don't know when it comes to their uh, their high school recruitment. But at the end of the day, Alabama still has a lot of really, really talented players on their roster. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.